role in the American Revolution. When people discuss the American Revolution, they often only discuss war heroes, founding fathers, and early presidents, idolizing them as if they were the sole figures behind the American Revolution. However, it's imperative to consider the people who are often excluded, lesser known people who initiated the campaign. John Adams wrote, without the pen of the author of Common Sense, Thomas Paine, the sword of Washington would have been raised in vain. Thomas Paine was unique in that he was a radical with an unparagoned doctrine. He may not be considered a founding father, but his crucial contribution to the American sentiment played an integral part in the founding of America. Thomas Paine was born on January 29, 1737 in Norfolk, England. Growing up poor, he only attended school up to the age of 13 before he began work as a stay maker. Three years later, he went overseas to the colonies to fight in the Seven Years' War as a sailor. He returned to England and worked as a stay maker until he started work in an excise office as a government worker. Despite his lack of education, Payne had a thirst for knowledge. Throughout 1757 to 1759, he attended lectures concerning Newtonian astronomy, which stressed harmony and universal order, guided by a divine law. Payne was also influenced by his Quaker beliefs in equality, prison reform, women's rights, and anti-slavery. As a worker, he noticed the common man's dilemma in a time where wages remained static and commodity prices ascended. He perceived the disparities between the affluent and destitute. He grew a staple of the Rockborough system and corrupt tyrannical government, where considerable populations had little representation. Payne's progressive views were the result of an amalgamation of his Quaker upbringing, interest in Newtonian astronomy, and inquisitive personality. In 1772, he decided to publish his first political work, The Case of the Officers of Excise. The 21-page pamphlet was an early endeavor to improve the conditions of the working class. He sent 4,000 copies to Parliament, but his efforts were in vain as Payne was fired from his job on April 8th due to the pamphlet. After being fired, Payne sold his house and possessions to avoid imprisonment from debt. Fortuit fortuitously, he had befriended Benjamin Franklin through their mutual interest in science when Franklin was in England. After observing Payne's un unpromising future, Franklin gave him advice to pursue a fresh start in the colonies and a letter of recommendation of Payne addressed to his son-in-law. Although Payne had no money, the letter gave him immediate work and a respected circle of friends. Payne landed at Philadelphia on November 30, 1774. By 1775, he was the editor of Pennsylvania Magazine. He wrote articles centralized around abolitionism until the Battle of Lexington and Concord on April 19, 1775. Then he composed the poem, The Liberty Tree, which symbolized Parliament and the King attacking colonial liberty. He realized that his work was not reaching the critical ears of the colonial aristocracy, who feared the consequences of a democratic upheaval. He concluded that the idea of sovereignty was no longer a nuance, and published his most famous work, Common Sense, a 47-page pamphlet which was unsigned on January 10, 1776. Up to this time, colonists had boycotted British goods, backlash the Boston Massacre, and participated in the Boston Tea Party in response to the various acts Parliament passed. The Sons of Liberty and the First Constable Congress may have convened, but colonists were proud of their British heritage and hadn't entertained the idea of independence. George Washington still toasted King George III at his dinners. Even citizens <coughs> of Boston, the heart of the revolution, maintained that independence wasn't the objective. Thomas Jefferson wrote, There is not in the British Empire a man who most cordially loves union with Great Britain than I do. Common sense was a major turning point in the American Revolution. Its effects might seem exaggerated, but it was truly a transformative moment in history. It persuaded dubious colonists that the only solution was independence from Britain. The pamphlet directly associated the king to the British government's boorish, inhumane conduct toward Native Americans, Indians, Africans, and the colonists. Payne revealed that the British government's constitution and aristocracy ensured anarchy, instability, and a false sense of liberty. He challenged the hereditary privilege and power that was prevalent in Europe. 
His work spoke directly to the colonists' values and experiences. Over 500,000 copies were sold within a few months. He justified the separation by stating it was not a treasonous act, but a moral one, as the Constitution of England was oppressive and inequitable. His work asserted that the colony's growth necessitated its citizens to delegate civil responsibilities. He radically articulated both independence and republicanism that signified and positively identified the revolution with democracy. In common sense, Payne repudiated colonists who could espouse reconciliation with Britain and planned a new foundation for America. He made an unprecedented Republican, Federalist, and Liberal Democrat plan of government, including a unicameral Congress, headed by presidents who would be elected annually. Each of the 13 districts would send 30 delegates, creating a large equal representation with a total of 390 members. For a law to be passed, three-fifths of the representation needed to vote for it. He considered this structure as a, res as a representative, representative democracy for the public good since it included all the various interests of all the territories. He later gave his proposal life with the help of Benjamin Franklin. They devised the Pennsylvania Constitution in 1776, consisting of the aforementioned plan augmented to encompass total religious freedom and universal suffrage for white males. Unlike others, Payne calls for the immediate action, emphasizing the colonists' hesit hesitation was an advantage for, the Brit for Britain as kingly rule would probably be expanded with time. He wrote that as long as colonists remain British subjects, they would not be acknowledged by other countries with the respect they wanted. He concluded comments <coughs> in his writing, nothing can settle our affairs so expeditiously as an open and determined declaration of independence. Common sense motivated colonists to pursue their independence at once, transforming unorganized spasmodic rebellions into the American Revolution. Whatever fragments of ambiguity the colonists had vanished after Payne's analysis. Words like democracy, representation, and independence were no longer whispered in alleys, but announced proudly on the streets. The pamphlet served, served as the unofficial rough draft and inspiration of the Declaration of Independence, which in turn established the United States of America, a land of prosperity, opportunity, freedom, and liberty. Thomas Paine is often overlooked in American history. But his contributions to American independence were in